one man slipped almost unnoticed into the record books of Rome 1960. He could float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. He was Cassius Clay. I first interviewed him in 1963 when he was coming here to fight Henry Cooper. He wasn't champion and he wasn't world champion. He was meeting Henry in what was a sort of final eliminator for the world title. And the BBC said to me, look, once Clay gets to London, you won't get near him. It'll be absolute bedlam. So why don't you go out to New York and interview him out there? So I said to him, look, uh, I believe you call yourself the greatest. Yeah, man, he said, I am the greatest. And I want everybody out there on TV to know it. OK, I said, well, why don't we go up to the top of the Empire State Building and then we can say that the greatest has met the highest. I've got a rhyme for you. It's fun to talk to Cassius Clay, but now's the time to call it a day. How's that? You're poor and don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> and feet show it. <laughs> And he loved that. He really did love that. It's really a shame that you putting him on me, this will be an annihilation. I'm too fast. In those days, he was thought to be a loudmouth young braggart. As loud as I'm hollering, you call me quiet. And the public hated these guts. I mean, I used to run four o'clock in the morning, and I used to see, like, office cleaners in the morning. Of, they should say, shut that big loud mouth's mouth up, go on we give him one. Now, supposing Cooper beats you, would this be a serious if Cooper setback? Beats, if Cooper beats me, I will retire. If Cooper goes over five rounds, I won't return to the United States for 90 days. To make it worse, I think, uh, the, the actual boxing, he came in that big blue velvet uh, dressing gown he had with a crown on. and uh, He put this on, went out to the way and sang, I am the king. I think the public gave him a bit of a hoot over it. They booed him as he was going. But it was a great atmosphere, let's be honest. All I want to do is to get the people in the house, and then whatever's going to happen will happen. Before he came along, it wasn't thought that men of 15 stone or more could be light on their feet. He jerked his head back, he dropped his hands, he was tall, he could get out of the way, and like to cut his mobility down, get him on the ropes, and then try to win him with a punch. I could throw a jab, and then bump, and then double quick, like turn it into an hook. So, which, which I did, and I actually called him. <laughs> And he was a good finisher. And once he had a man on, you know, on the hook, on his left hook, um, he didn't let them go. So if he'd hit Clay like that a little earlier, uh, I, that whole thing might have changed and the whole of boxing history might have changed. Anyway, the fifth round, uh, Henry's eye went badly. It is the worst cuffed eye I've seen for a very, very long time indeed. Warm blood was dr dripping onto me body and I could feel... I mean, when you're feeling hot blood like coming onto your body, you know it's. It, I knew it was bad. So uh, then you just have, you just have to try to go mad and uh, well, not go mad, but you just have to try to, to land your big punch, which I tried to do, but uh, unfortunately it was uh, you know it was too bad. And the referee had to stop it. And Tommy was looking at it, and he had to stop it. It's all over. In round five, the man who was put down at the end of the fourth round, and Cooper, although he's been beaten on a cut eye. The following year, Clay challenged for the world heavyweight title against the most feared fighter of his generation. Nobody, but nobody, gave him a chance against Sonny Liston when he fought for the title in 1964. He was a 7-to-1 underdog. And 7 million people in Britain stayed up to watch what was the first ever fight to be transmitted live across the Atlantic by satellite. Liston will be merciless, he won't give him any mercy. See, Liston had never boxed anyone like him before. That's the way Clay is brushing aside Liston's punches now with his gloves. But what unfortunately happened, Liston had tore a muscle in his left shoulder. Now, there's nothing worse to go in the ring and start swinging your left out and missing, not hitting the opponent. If you're missing, then you're pulling it and stretching it and, and, you're, and you're playing it up and bet your life it played. Well, it did, it played him up. And what's happened? Clay has won! Clay has won! It's all over at the end of the fifth round. The Cassius Clay is the new champion of the world. 
suddenly everything changed. He won the fight and went on to become not only the most famous boxer in the world, the most famous sportsman in the world, and at one point in his career, I actually believe he was the most famous person in the world. He wanted to go to heaven, so I took him in seven. You took him in seven. I am the king of the world. Hold it, hold it, I'm hold it. Pretty. Hold it, you're not that pretty. I'm a bad man. He was loved all over the world.